بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهلا وسهلا بحضراتكم في هذا الويبينار اللي بنتكلم فيه على الفنتليشن اوف هوسبيتالز ان كوفيد 19 او سارس كوف في 2 ديزيز نوفل كورونا فايروس والمتوقع للاسف بعد الويف اللي احنا فيها اللي بدات تتحسن Uh, يبقى في سكند ويف ممكن يبقى في ثيرد ويف او نعيش في ويفز معانا لغايه ما يحصل ان يبقى في ديفينت تريتمنت اور ديفينت فاكسينيشن فور موست اوف بابيوليشن اول اراوند ذا وورلد علشان ما يتحولش لسيزون فلو او على احسن تقدير ان هو يتحول لسيزون فلو مشكلتنا في المستشفيات دلوقتي اور كرنت بروبلم اكشلي ذا فنتليشن بيكوز ات هيرتس اول Uh, people in the uh, hospital, uh, admin staff, clinical staff, visitors, vendors, and patients themselves, uh, either they are coronavirus positive or not, plus the, uh, the providers, the, the staff providing the care. Mr. Jabal Shahar, one of the uh, most interesting surveys experts in FMS, uh, how to treat uh, this problem in our hospitals, here in Saudi Arabia or even in low uh, income settings uh, like different countries we have a few interim measures or transitional measures بحيث دلوقتي كل حالات العزل اللي موجوده في المستشفيات تقريبا بتفوق طاقه العزل في اي مستشفى غرف العزل اللي موجوده ممكن يبقى عندك 4 5 10 غرف طبعا انت ممكن يبقى عندك 20 30 50 مريض ممكن تبقى مستشفى ديديكيتد فولي تو كوفيد 19 بيشنتس علشان كده محتاجين حلول عمليه وسريعه علشان نتاكد ان العيان معزوم صح ونحمي نحمي من سوبر انفكشن ونحمي الهيلث كير بروفايدر استاذ جمال الشعار without any further delay this stage is yours thank you very much dr ahmed uh, it's a pleasure uh, my pleasure to be here uh, with you today it's and, mine uh, sir thank you thank you and i appreciate all of you uh, your attending uh, شكرا للجميع على حضوركم ومبروك عليكم الشهر وربنا يتقبل صالح اعمالكم. مبارك. فان شاء الله تكون المحاضره فيها فائده للجميع ولو في اي اسئله باذن الله تعالى نحاول نجيب عليها. So uh, we'll start uh, ان شاء الله our presentation. I hope everybody can hear me okay. The sound is, uh, is fine. Okay. So the objective of uh, this presentation today it will be just an introduction to HVAC system in healthcare settings. So we'll just speak briefly about HVAC system so you know what we are talking about. هنتكلم عن التكييف والفنتيليشن والتهوية في المستشفيات الافشنسي فيرسز سيفتي ايضا هنتكلم عليها بشكل يعني مبسط ونتكلم على غرف العزل الايزوليشن رومز على الهيبا فلترز في المستشفيات طبعا في اكثر من نوع هيبا فلتر ولكن هنركز على الواحد من الانواع اللي هو يستخدم في المستشفيات في غرف العزل ترياجينج ديورينج الكوفيد 19 كرايسيس how to make your hospital safe and uh, changing patients room into uh, ICU rooms if needed. Uh, then because of the great demand on uh, ICE for ICU patients, uh, hopefully you will, you will not need it or, and we will not need it. But just to be ready in case uh, you need to. And then uh, positive versus negative pressure uh, operating rooms for COVID-19. So should we use uh, positive pressure or negative pressure operating rooms? We will see what is the recommended. And finally, we'll just talk in just in brief, very small brief, about hospitals uh, without or with improper ventilation systems. طبعا بالعربي بس بتكلم على التراجين, the visual triaging طبعا على المرضى كيف يتحكم في المرضى أثناء دخولهم المستشفى علشان نحد من انتشار الفيروس. وأيضا بالنسبة لو اضطرينا نغير غرف المرضى العادية إلى غرف عناية مركزة. ايضا هنتكلم على الغرف العمليات هل يفضل ان تكون العمليات في غرف العمليات ضغط ايجابي او ضغط سلبي ايش الادفانتج الفوائد والاضرار ايضا في المستشفيات اللي لا توجد مستشفيات قديمه طبعا في جميع انحاء العالم اللي ما فيها انظمه التهويه طبعا انتروداكشن على الـ على السيستم The issue of the heating and ventilation systems. So it's very much it is a technology for indoor environment comfort. يعني إيش why is it there? ليش إيش الفائدة منها؟ إنه تتأمن الراحة للموظفين وال والمرضى. عن طريق طبعاً الراحة نتكلم عن طريق الحرارة والتهوية والروائح وأيضاً تأمين ال السرعة. 
الحد من الفيروسات والبكتيريا والكونتامينت الموجوده في البيئه. So why do we need it? As I just mentioned, so it is uh, need to keep uh, the patients and the staff uh, warm in the in the winter and uh, cool uh, in the summer. In addition, that we need to maintain the pressure, the, the right pressure in the in the room. So here, is, if you can just see the the first image on the left, uh, so in the right hand side, okay, you can just see that uh, this is a ventilation system. The air will come in fresh air from outside. Then you have a return. The air will go out to the outside. So for uh, we'll talk more about this uh, connections here, uh, which is uh, the, the return. The other advantage uh, for the HVAC system or uh, heating, ventilation, and uh, air conditioning is to provide positive or negative pressure. So here I have uh, here you have the supply where the fresh air is coming into a, a room. This is a uh, an isolation room. So when the when the supply is higher than the exhaust, which is down here, then that will give me a positive pressure. So this room will be positive pressure. The air will escape from this room. If somebody opens the door, the air will go outside and go to uh, across. And uh, the benefit of this is to protect the patient from any uh, viruses or bacteria from outside. So the idea of the positive pressure is to protect the patient from any virus or bacteria from outside. So the idea of the positive يكون كميته أكثر من الهواء اللي يطلع من الغرفة عن طريق الإكسوز. لو صار العكس لو كان الإكسوز كمية الهواء اللي تطلع من ال من الغرفة هي أكثر من الهواء الداخل حيكون عندي النيجاتيف بريشر في هذا الحالة. So if we have more exhaust or the air that's exiting the room through the local exhaust is more than the supply, then I will have a negative pressure. And then the air from outside, if you open the door, the air from outside will come in. And this to protect the staff and the rest of the hospital and other patients from uh, viruses or any infectious uh, diseases. Because we have a patient here uh, inside the room who has uh, infection, you don't want this infection to be spread or to leave the room. Then the component of an HVAC. So, we can, so what is in an HVAC system? What do we have inside the heating uh, and ventilation system? As you can see here, so here we have the, the air will enter from this. This is the, the air go into the hospital. Then we have the return where the uh, air will exit the hospital. So first of all, you have the dampers. Here you can see the dampers. These where they will open and close just to prevent uh, anything from uh, opening. The system is not in use. We have the drills here, uh, these two parts. These will prevent any, uh, for example, birds or uh, dirt, or bags, any papers, anything from entering the system so it will not clog the system. Then we have uh, filters. There are multiple filters uh, there. It's a big uh, coarse filter to prevent anything from uh, entering. It will find. Then you have a bag filter, and that will prevent any dust or any small particles from uh, getting in. And uh, after this, we have two coils. There are two coils one uh, a cooling coil, and there is a heating coil. So in the winter time, when the weather uh, is, uh, is very cold in the winter, then you need to heat the air so it will not get inside. We use the heating coil which is uh, right here. And that will heat the air coming inside uh, the hospital or inside uh, the patient care area. In the summertime, it's the opposite. So you have the, the cooling coil, which is in the, the air is coming in very hot from outside. We need to control that temperature so the air will come in. Uh, it will be cooled uh, in these coils. And of course, these coils are designed according to the size and the airflow in the, in the duct. Then you have the motors there that will, uh, will drive uh, the air to push the air through the hospital. Also, these they have another job that will, uh, will control the temperature and control the humidity. So in the summertime, when you have very uh, high humidity and, uh, outside, when the air comes in, it will be uh, condensation here to remove that water, the excess water uh, from the air uh, coming inside the hospital, and you'll, you'll have, uh, you will control the humidity and the uh, temperature. So here you can see a system. So that's where the air uh, air flow, air is coming from uh, outside, fresh air. It goes through the filters, the first filter, other filter, then the coil into the fan. Uh, it goes into the patient room or uh, different rooms. Then it will exit from the exhaust out to the hospital. But the problem with this system, if you have this, it will be very costly to, to heat the system to keep, to keep all fresh air, uh, unless in some areas it's needed, but in general, we have to be efficient. We have to reuse the air. So instead of uh, heating, or we have to use the, have a larger uh, 
uh, coils here for heating or uh, cooling, then the same air will have a return. So it will go air, the same air coming from the hospital or from the patient room comes back and it will be uh, circulated. So here, this air is warm uh, in the winter, then it will come back here, so it will use less energy. So that is one advantage, but also there is a disadvantage with this. Uh, in most cases, this you have only 20% air comes in fresh, then about 80% approximately that go, it will be circulated. Or they try to use minimum air uh, from this uh, as low as possible uh, to use to, uh, to be high efficiency, efficient, uh, highly efficient. But how about you start from patient area, so you start getting carbon dioxide and there are other contaminants from the return. We don't want this to go inside the patient. I will try to spread this. Could be viruses, could be bacteria, it could be uh, just uh, CO2 uh, from other uh, from equipment or from patients, the number of patients. So some system, they are the smart systems. When the percentage of oxygen, uh, I'm sorry, the percentage of uh, CO2, it gets high, then it will control uh, more. So then it will have more fresh air coming in and it will reduce the circulation uh, in this part. So it will increase the, the ventilation, so the uh, CO2 will be uh, exhausted outside and more fresh air will be, will be coming in. So this is one of the disadvantages of uh, uh, circulating or being efficient, trying to circulate the air. Uh, if you have, uh, uh, God forbid, when there are patients who are, uh, they have airborne viruses, then it, it can be transferred through these uh, circulation and it can be spread into the hospital. And we'll see this a bit more details. So here again, so you have, this is the supply air coming in through the filters, through the coils. It goes into the hospital, it goes into room one, room two, room three, etc. So it will get into all the rooms. And that's where the return uh, it comes out. So here you can see that the air is coming out. Well, what happens here now, you have any contaminants, whether it's viruses, bacteria, or just any other uh, contaminants, it's gonna go back and that would be spread from one room to another room because they are sharing the same uh, ventilation system. Uh, that's why we'll see it later on. Uh, isolation rooms uh, requires to have a dedicated uh, exhaust system, 100% fresh air, 100% uh, exhaust. So that it will not be shared with other rooms. It can be shared with other isolation rooms, but not uh, other patients' rooms. And this is a bit closer look for uh, for the system. So the air will be coming through, uh, through the HVAC, the system, this is the supply. Because uh, above the ceiling, this is a drop ceiling where that's the area we see everything above the ceiling, we usually don't see it. And in hospitals, different patients require different needs. So some patients like the, their room to be cold, other patients, they might uh, like it to be warm. So there's something called uh, the fine cold unit. Uh, so uh, this is, each room has one unit that will control the temperature in that separate room. So uh, the fresh air comes in from uh, this area here above the ceiling. It goes through a filter and there's a heating and cooling unit in, in this area with fans that will force air according to the temperature set inside this room. So this room may be set at 20 Celsius degrees. The next room can be set at 25. It depends on the patient's need. So you can control each room will be controlled separately. Then the return goes up above the ceiling and then it will be vented to the exhaust system. But the problem is with these exhaust systems, they are shared. So from one room to other room. So if we have any uh, uh, bacteria or viruses, we might share it with other rooms. So uh, this system, that's why we use the negative pressure room. Uh, to resolve this issue, as we mentioned earlier, for the cross-contamination, this is a different system that is uh, used. We call it the X or the cross uh, ventilation system, where the air, the supply air will come through the upper duct, as you can see it here then it will come down through where there's a box where they will be crossed. The air will not cross the, the supply with the return, but there are small ducts here with the thin sheets of metal that will get, uh, they will hold the temperatures. So the air will come here, then it will uh, cross down, continue to the patient room, then the exhaust is coming out, then it will cross with this through these hot, uh, thin uh, layers, and it will have the temperature, so it will cool. So temperatures from here, it will be transferred to the return. So this is another way to, for efficiency, and this is more, uh, this is more efficient. Uh, I'm sorry, this is less efficient, but it is uh, more uh, safe. Of course, the cost is more. So everything uh, comes with the cost. So you need to have uh, an efficient and safe, it will cost more. And this is not used uh, a lot, but in some, uh, some areas they, they do use it, and it is a good system to use. 
Let's see the isolation rooms. So isolation rooms, as we had mentioned, so now we have an idea about the ventilation system, how it works and uh, how we deal with it. But uh, the isolation rooms, as we mentioned, we need to have 100% uh, fresh air coming in and 100% uh, air ventilated. So it should not go into other rooms. And here you can see the fresh air will be coming uh, supply into, uh, into the patient room, right from, uh, from this area. That's fresh air coming. Then that's the exhaust will come out. So you have the, uh, the bathrooms and you have the anteroom. Even though the anteroom is not mandated uh, uh, to have, but it is better, definitely better to have the anteroom in the isolation room. But you can have uh, an isolation room without the anteroom. It has to be at least 18 square meters in, uh, uh, in, uh, in area for the room. And these are the requirements, uh, requirements of uh, MOH. So we have, uh, again, so we have the ventilation inside the anteroom. We have ventilation inside the patient room. And uh, in the bathroom, we have the suction, uh, the return or the exhaust, and in the anteroom and inside the room. So the best way to have uh, this, uh, this, the return or the uh, vent, it should be closer to the patient, above the patient head, bed or close to the patient head. Uh, the recommended is about 17 uh, inches from the floor. And we'll see this a little, in a little bit more details later on uh, and why, why that should happen. So what else should be inside the, uh, an isolation room? So we have the exhaust, negative pressure, positive pressure, or the supply and return. And we have also, uh, we need a monitor. So we need to monitor the room. Usually one monitor could be outside, which is fine. It will monitor the differential pressures. So before you go into the, into the room, you need to make sure that you check the differential uh, pressure and the room is uh, negative pressure. Usually it's measured by Pascal or by water uh, pressure, but most, most hospitals, they use the Pascal. So what is the requirement? It should be at least negative 2.5 Pascals. So it will measure the pressure outside the room and it will measure the pressure inside and the differential pressure between these two points, it should be at least 2.5 Pascals. Then what else is needed there? Or what are the requirements of this monitor, the one we have outside the room? It could be, it could be two monitors, one inside uh, the anteroom, one outside, or it could be one monitor, it's fine, it will, uh, it will be okay. So having one monitor, it needs to have an alarm. So it should be a visual alarm, and it should be also an audio alarm. So here when you have, uh, if the pressure uh, drops below 2.5, less than 2.5 pascals, uh, then it should be, this usually changes into red, or it will give you an indication in addition, there will be an alarm. So to alert people that the pressure had dropped, there might be a problem with the ventilation system. Uh, what else is needed? You, they usually add a switch at the door. So when someone opens the door, it will give an alarm. So this way, if the door is left open for a long period of time, it will give uh, a problem. Uh, another thing, there are uh, switches, uh, dampers where you can control the area and you have the sensors uh, inside. طبعا غرف العزل تكلمنا عليها حتكون ضروري تكون الضغط فيها يكون سلبي عشان لو احد فتح الابواب الهواء يدخل الى الغرفه يمنع البكتيريا من الخروج او اي امراض مرئيه من خروج هذه الغرفه عاده فيها ثلاث اقسام هي الغرفه الانتي روم الغرفه او الاير لاك روم الغرفه الصغيره عشان فيها البي بي ايز معدات الوقايه ايضا في باب ثاني يدخل الى غرفه المريض وايضا يوجد دورة مياه. طبعا الضغط هنا في هذه الغرفة خارج الغرفة الضغط ايجابي بوزيتيف بريشر اوتسايد ان ذا كوريدورز. ان ذا انتي روم از نيجاتيف بريشر في غرفة الاير لاك الضغط فيها سلبي. في غرفة المريض ان ذا بيشنت روم اتس نيجاتيف سترونجر نيجاتيف بريشر. سو ذا اير ويل فلو فروم ذا كوريدور انتو ذا روم ذا انتي روم ذن فروم ذا انتي روم انتو ذا بيشنت روم اند فروم ذا بيشنت روم انتو ذا باث روم. So that's the, the air, it will circulate. Maybe the next slide will make that a little bit earlier to, uh, to see. Okay, but, uh, let me interrupt, please, uh, Mr. Gamal. Okay. Uh, um, for, for anteroom, yes, Sabahi uh, now is not requiring anteroom to be there uh, just before the uh, negative pressure room, right? Uh, that's correct. But what, what about the, the best practice, especially for such a pandemic now uh, we are facing. So anti-room yeah. gets back to, you know, under light, so it, it has to be there, and negative pressure has to be equipping this anti-room, so the airlock is, is good. You are going through to the, to, to the patient's room and everything is okay, negative pressure, negative pressure, and even uh, MOH here in Saudi Arabia is requiring 
at least 2.5 pascal as a pressure for negative pressure. But Absolutely. what about other best practices? Because, you know, there are European and American and Australian guidelines might go through 15 to 30 uh, pascal. Might yeah. So, so uh, let, let's, uh, let, let's uh, hear uh, Mr. Jamal in, in terms of best practice. So we are learning. It's a learning curve, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the best practice, of course, is uh, best to have the anterope. If you can, uh, I mean, don't, uh, if you have the chance and you can make it, it's absolutely better. It, it has a lot of benefits and it will control, it reduces the, uh, the outbreak or it reduces reduce uh, the uh, bacteria or viruses from escaping because you have two doors. First door you get in, plus you have your BBEs inside uh, the room, there's a sink. There are requirements for the anterope uh, in addition. So it's definitely, it is uh, strongly recommended to have it even though they, it's not mandated, even the ASHRAE doesn't mandate um, the anterior, but it is strongly recommended okay. uh, to have the anterior. The negative pressure, again, it's a minimum 2.5 pascal. It should be, the, the more pressure you have, the better uh, protection you will have in your, uh, in your area. When you are at the minimum at 2.5 or the minus 2.5 pascals, that any, uh, anything goes wrong or if the door stays open, you might have the pressure will definitely drop below 2.5 pascals, and there's a risk of uh, uh, the air circulating outside the room. So when you have a stronger negative pressure, a stronger differential pressure in the room, you'll have a better chance and better uh, protection. There is something else that I would like to add yeah, uh, just for this. Uh, a lot of people might uh, think that if we have the air changes per hour, uh, which is at least 12 air changes per hour for, the anti for, the air, for our isolation room, uh, it means I, I meet my uh, minus 2.5 pascals. And that is not true. There is no relation between yeah. the uh, yeah. changes. Yeah, two different issues, yeah. Absolutely different. We will talk about it a little bit more uh, later on. Okay, uh, I have further question in this context, please. So what about the corridor uh, outside the uh, negative pressure room or ante room? Uh, considering the best practices, one pathway, especially in, in this pandemic or, you know, such pandemics all over the world historically you have to have one pathway so you have anti room and then the patient's room and then you are leaving from the different side so one pathway uh, uh, what, what about the corridor outside the anti room or the negative pressure room it should be balanced or positive it should be positive pressure the one. corridor should be positive pressure yeah it's better to have the positive pressure for the corridor. so this way it's, it's a clean and you're pushing the, the air even if you have a drop in the negative pressure inside uh, the uh, ante room or inside yeah. the isolation room. So then further the protection, further protection, yeah. Yes, absolutely, then you have buzzer okay. pressure, so it will keep forcing the air. Uh, for having a corridor, one-way corridor, it is a uh, luxury, but unfortunately, I think some hospitals, uh, they, they don't have that luxury to, uh, to control. Uh, it's best if you can control your isolation rooms in one area. Again, that is a luxury. If you can uh, have one department, your isolation rooms, then it's a, it's, it's a plus. It's a positive. Or you can have it in one area. It could be in each level. It depends on your, in your hospital. You have uh, three floors, for example. Each floor can be in one care, like uh, in one area towards the end of the corridors. could be your uh, negative pressure rooms, isolation rooms. But again, it depends on your layout and depends on the capability of the hospital and depends on the age of the hospital. Uh, some hospitals are very old and old design. So uh, they, they had uh, to, to do with whatever they have. So they added the ducts, they added the ventilation uh, to make it negative pressure, added the HIPAA filters and so on. But they have still, the corridors are difficult to control into one, uh, one flow, uh, one way flow. But definitely it is a plus. If it can be done, it is absolutely uh, an advantage. Uh, That's okay. Okay. For the air distribution layout, as we had mentioned, uh, for the, uh, in the isolation room, we said the exhaust air inlet should be over the patient head uh, or the patient bed and close to the uh, head. And this is for uh, the exhaust. And it should, this way it will allow the air to flow from the door to the patient, so it will prevent uh, having the air coming from the patient back into the door. And the exhaust will be coming from the other way. So preferred location, uh, the exhaust, again, as we mentioned earlier, I said earlier 17 inches, sorry, 7 inches, 17.5 uh, uh, centimeters above the floor level. It should be close to the uh, headrest or close to the head of the patient. This way, if the patient's coughing or he's sneezing or when he's breathing, it's the, the ventilation, the exhaust is uh, catching that immediately and getting it out of the, uh, out of the room. Uh, for the anteroom, the requirements, again, it should be... Uh, 
the air should transfer from the corridor, as we mentioned earlier, the corridor is positive pressure, anti room is negative pressure, and uh, the uh, isolation room is stronger, and negative pressure goes into the bathroom. Bathroom is mandated in uh, uh, all, anti in all uh, isolation rooms, mm -hmm. except uh, the, uh, if you have the ICU, because patients are immobile, so it's, it's fine. But all the other uh, isolation rooms, it's mandatory to have uh, the bathroom, and it has to be negative pressure, stronger negative pressure. So the anti room is a positive pressure in respect with the isolation room, as we mentioned earlier. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, that room, the anti room is a positive pressure in respect for the corridor. So again, the strongest uh, negative pressure in the isolation room, then the anti room, then the corridor would be positive pressure. And this, uh, here it will make it a little bit easier. As you can see here, uh, this is the corridor. That's a good uh, layout. That's about seven inches or 17.5 centimeters from the floor towards the patient head. So the air flows coming from here, it comes out, goes towards the, the ventilation. The patient, as he's breathing, the air is coming out right into the exhaust on the ventilation. And the, oil from, uh, the, uh, the air from outside, here you have positive pressure, then here is a negative pressure. Inside the isolation room, stronger by, uh, negative pressure, and the bathroom usually uh, has the highest negative pressure because you need the air flow uh, coming back. Okay, I guess uh, we have uh, a question from Ms. Glenda Anodin. Are you uh, ready for, for sound? I'm going to allow you to talk. Okay, so we are ready? Okay. Ms. Uh, Glenda. I'm trying to unmute you, but... Okay, so uh, if you have any question, please write it down and uh, I'll uh, just uh, pass by to uh, Mr. Shah. Please. Okay, so for uh, until you write the, the, uh, the question, I will just continue briefly. Yeah, so yeah, the please. Yeah. Room, again, we'll have the exhaust systems. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, the exhaust system has to be dedicated uh, for that room uh, and anti room. So we should not have uh, the exhaust shared with the regular patient room. As mentioned, it is, uh, it's okay to share it with other uh, uh, negative pressure isolation rooms. I can have two or three uh, negative pressure isolation rooms in one area with one uh, exhaust, sy uh, exhaust system, it's fine. Uh, actually, it is uh, also they recommend uh, that just for uh, uh, energy saving. The exhaust fan uh, should be, it's recommended to have it at the end of the duct. Because if you have it, most hospitals, the exhaust fan or uh, is placed uh, in the beginning or uh, close to the in, in the middle halfway uh, in the in the duct and that would keep one that would be part of the duct above the exhaust fan would be positive pressure and the other half below the duct uh, below the exhaust fan would be negative pressure so if you have any problem with the exhaust or if you have any tears or any issue then you have you're spreading that uh, 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 air which might be contaminated into uh, uh, into the uh, the building so it's always best to have the exhaust fan at the end of the duct. And same uh, with the filters. So the discharge exhaust should be above the highest uh, roof area. Try to select, and this is one common mistake we see uh, during our rounds when we go to hospitals during visits. Uh, you see the exhaust, fan, uh, exhaust fans coming out of the ceiling or out of the side because they, they added these isolation rooms. It was not an isolation room, they added uh, an exhaust that is coming out of the side of the building which is, it's a high risk uh, to that. So it should be to extend it all the way to the roof and should be at the highest uh, point in the roof. Uh, extent, yeah, in this point, Mr. 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 Yeah, please. Uh, in this point, uh, do you recommend the negative pressure rooms to be in the lowest floors of the hospital or the highest? Uh, it, it makes no difference. I think it should be spread across the hospital. Uh, I mean, uh, some hospital, you'll find them in every floor. Uh, there are. Uh, in other hospitals, you have one area, it's an isolation ward, and it has all negative pressure room. So it's fine. But if you have it in the highest, it will be easier to ventilate. Yes. But yeah. then you have the risk of when transferring patient, transporting patient from ER to, uh, for example, to uh, the third or second or higher floor, then you have the risk of uh, cross-contamination. So it's, uh, each has advantage and disadvantage. Yeah. So if you have it closer to the ER, that's where you get the patient from the ER, it will be very easy to trans transport them into the uh, isolation room. Okay. So that is an advantage, but this advantage will be having a long ducts and you need a bigger motor okay. uh, to ventilate to the room. 
-hmm. So it's always a, it's a sword with a two-edged sword. Uh, we are happy with 1.8 meters above uh, the floor. Yeah. We uh, actually recommend three meters at least above the, uh, the floor for the ventilation. So if you can get it at 1.8 meters, it's fine. it's fine. But also, not just only the 1.8 meters, the, the height, but also the distance from other, uh, the, the, the intake. So you have the return uh, or the supply air, which comes back. We've seen it also in some hospitals where they are very close. So the exhaust coming out uh, from one area, that 1.5 or 2 meters away, you have the return. So the air is coming out from uh, negative pressure room, isolation rooms, and getting uh, sucked into the uh, inlet and distributed across the hospital. So that's not acceptable. It has to be at least 8 meters or 25 feet uh, from uh, the intake or from any window or uh, opening in the, uh, in the building that, uh, of course, operable windows. Uh, so window that you uh, can open, it has to be at least 8 meters, the ventilation uh, from uh, this window or that door. And that's why they recommend to have it in the highest point. And if you are at 1.8 meters, then you will meet uh, that criteria. Uh, also, it has to be all the, the, uh, the exhaust fans and all the associate uh, controls for that has to be connected to the emergency power. In case you have a power outage, a power failure, uh, which is it, uh, likely to happen in summertime when you have overload, or like it should happen uh, last year in the, in the southern part, where it's a big area. Uh, I think many hospitals, they lost uh, the, uh, the power. So if you have uh, your generators, emergency power should uh, keep running the critical care areas, including the isolation room. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to be labeled, the ducts, uh, so this way for your staff when they go up to the hospital to, uh, to maintain or do any maintenance, they know uh, what these ducts are. So each duct, each filter, each fan, it has to be labeled with uh, either like uh, biohazard or communicable disease contaminant uh, air. So this way they know they have to be protected. If they have to do any, uh, any work, uh, and these, they have to be well protected. They have to wear their N95 mask and they have to wear probably face shield and uh, to make sure that they are uh, well protected. And we'll talk about replacing the HIPAA filter later on and how to deal with any repairs. For uh, instrumentation, as we mentioned earlier, that needed inside the isolation room, we said you need to have a local uh, visual alarm and it is best, uh, even the ASHRAE actually mandate that uh, it is connected to the BMS, the building management system. So in case someone's away from that room or far, the uh, BMS, there's somebody 24 hours monitoring the system, they will know there is a problem, whether the pressure had dropped or so the door was left open uh, or uh, any other issues. So it will, uh, it will alarm. So it's mandated to have the visual alarm and you need to have the, uh, the, the sound uh, alarm. And in addition, it should be connected to the BMS room. Uh, room pressure monitoring should be provided uh, via pressure monitor. So each room, it's not enough to test it by uh, with smoke test or a tissue test or uh, having other tests, even if you have a small uh, differential pressure uh, monitor, that you take it from one room to other room. So it has to be fixed monitor, it has to be set by the room, it has to be monitored uh, routinely. So if you have patient inside the room, you need to monitor the pressure uh, on a daily basis, uh, the uh, differential pressure. If there are no patients in, uh, in the room, it has to be monitored at least once a week. Uh, these are the SIBAH standard and these are the uh, MOH standards. So if there's a patient in the room, you need to monitor on a daily basis, uh, daily basis uh, the differential pressure. If there is no patient, then it can be monitored once a week. Uh, the air changes per hour has to be done only once every three months. So, or if you have any issue, you think there is a problem, the weak ventilation, then you need to uh, recheck uh, the air changes per hour. Also, as mentioned earlier, the local visual alarm uh, can be connected to BMS, or it can be a wall, a wall in a wall. I think many, many of you uh, have heard this term, or it's the first time you hear the, this term. So old hospitals, they might have, it's a small ball, could be a different color, or then inside the wall. And when the pressure drops, the, wall, the, the ball will go inside, so you don't see it. So that's an indication, which is fine. It is acceptable. Mm -hmm. If you have one of these old hospitals and the system is functioning, it is okay. So it does not have to be a digital uh, monitor. But as long as you have daily monitoring, that, uh, it is acceptable. I need to provide an automatic airflow control. Also in the pressure, and this is, again, it is a, a luxury to have. If when you open the door, the pressure will drop. 
So you need so to make up that pressure. So uh, the airflow uh, valve will, will uh, open more or will increase the speed. So you will have just to make sure that the pressurization of the room uh, maintains. Uh, so this is if you have, if you open the room, you notice many uh, hospitals, if you open the isolation room for a few seconds, the alarm will sound because the pressure will drop immediately to less than 2.5 pascals. And that's as Dr. Uh, Ahmed had mentioned earlier, in some countries, in Canada and others, they recommend they uh, to go up to 25 or even 30 pascals, uh, the pressure pressure. This way, even if you open the door, it will be, uh, you'll still have uh, proper negative pressure. But the only uh, problem with that would be for small staff, uh, be, they will have a hard time opening the door because when you have very strong negative pressure, you need to have muscles to open that door. Yeah. It's a good incentive to go to the gym. Yes, that's it. So you get your uh, workout. But, but gym is closed then. <laughs> <laughs> well, so if you work at home, now the workout is done at home. <laughs> now it would be your exercise, just opening and closing the isolation door. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> These are some of the actual standards I stated I put there. Uh, some things that probably most of us, more, many people don't know, uh, the ASHRAE standards uh, 170- these were uh, established in 2013 or updated in 2013. So there are some exceptions uh, for the system. So uh, even though you're allowed to have, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, efficient system uh, circulation, but for isolation rooms, it's not allowed. So you cannot recirculate uh, the air for isolation room. It has to be, as we mentioned earlier, 100% fresh air coming in, 100% uh, exhausted. So heat recovery system are not permitted. Uh, exhaust uh, from all fume hoods or biological safety cabinets in the lab is not permitted to have uh, circulation. Kitchen exhaust is not allowed. Uh, autopsy exhaust, uh, isolation rooms, uh, wet exhaust rooms uh, from the car washes and CSST and uh, so on. And of course, ethylene oxide, if anybody is still using that. I think this is no longer uh, used mm. uh, in hospitals so due to the high risk and uh, high toxicity. Uh, uh, restrictions again for uh, in the uh, ASHRAE standards that shaft. So we usually you run all your uh, ducts through a shaft going up uh, to the roof. So it's not uh, uh, allowed to run the ducts for from isolation rooms or for smoke. Uh, the civil defense mandate to have a smoke uh, exhaust in case of uh, fires there's a fan that will uh, suck the smoke outside the building. That should not be run with the same ducts of, uh, in the same shaft where you have your ducts. Also, uh, removal of uh, flammable vapors. If you have the labs or you have other areas where you have flammable uh, gases or vapor, it should not be run with the same shaft. Uh, also, the duct that has corrosive fumes or vapors, they are not allowed to be run in the same shaft. So this is just thought I want to uh, bring this to, uh, to everybody's attention. So you will be aware because it is, uh, you, we do see it a lot. Uh, flexible ducts, uh, these are the round flexible ducts that, uh, again, if you have to use them or the hospital have to use them, especially nowadays because we have to, uh, some, some hospitals they have to uh, add or make some rooms negative pressure. So if you have uh, portable HIPAA filters or if you have other filters connected with ducts, uh, it is okay but should not exceed uh, two meters, five feet in, in length. Uh, so that is uh, something that to take in consideration because they will collapse with the pressure. They cannot handle uh, high pressure. Also, when you have change, if you have the, the ducts, you cannot bend them uh, more than uh, 45 degrees. So sometimes you have to bend them at 90 degrees, they're going up the ceiling, then you go uh, 90 degrees above the ceiling, they will collapse and you have a problem. So they can be slightly shifted or uh, uh, they bend up to 45 degrees only, no, no more than uh, 45 degrees. Uh, do not use flexible ducts in exposed uh, ductwork. So they have to be protected areas uh, because they can easily be punctured. So they have to be uh, protected if you have to use them. And of course, do not penetrate firewalls with, uh, with these, as we mentioned, because they can easily be punctured, they can easily uh, burn that in case of fire. So whenever you're penetrating firewalls, it has to be a uh, uh, steel duct. And of course, we're using the fire stuff material around. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Jamal, uh, we have uh, like uh, 12 minutes uh, left. Uh, uh, I guess we, we will be in need for, for another lecture, uh, another okay. webinar soon, uh, because it's a lot to digest, a lot to consume. And uh, mashallah, you are uh, one of the top experts. So if, if we can go for, yeah, for the isolation, proper isolation. Yeah. 
So, uh, okay, so this we had already covered in the middle of the Azal, as we talked about, that it has to be a little bit of a salvi or a salib. The air will enter from the Fatha and it will be 100% of the air that will come out. It is necessary that this air will enter from another air, other than the Azal. As we talked about, the pressure monitor here has to be at least 2.5 Pascal, the differential pressure. فرق الضغط بين داخل الغرفة وخارج الغرفة الهواء لازم يكون على الأقل يتغير في الغرفة 12 مرة في الساعة طبعا نحن أيضا لو الهواء يتغير 12 مرة في الساعة هذا لا يعني أنه الضغط هنا يعطيني هذا الضغط اللي أنا محتاجه اللي هو 2.5 باسكال أنه ممكن يكون عندي الهواء يتغير في الغرفة 20 مرة أو 30 مرة في الساعة ولكن يكون عندي الغرفة هي نيوترال بريشر ما فيها ضغط لا ايجابي ولا ضغط سلبي فهي كميه الهواء كيف انا بسوي الضغط السالب في الغرفه كميه الهواء اللي تدخل الى الغرفه هتكون اقل من كميه الهواء اللي تطلع من الغرفه فلو كان كميه الهواء اللي تدخل نفس كميه الهواء اللي تخرج من الغرفه هيكون عندي الضغط نيوترال ضغط معتدل كميه الهواء اللي تدخل اكثر من كميه الهواء اللي تطلع هيكون عندي ضغط ايجابي يطلع خارج الغرفه لو كمية الهواء اللي تطلع من الغرفة أقل من كمية الهواء اللي تدخل إلى الغرفة يكون عندي الضغط نيجاتيف بريشر أو ضغط سالب. طبعا الهيبا فلترز قلنا فيها أكثر من أنواع في الهيبا لايك فلترز كابتشرز فيو كونتامينانس بارتيكلز مور ذان 2 مايكرونز ار لارجر اند ات هاز 500% ديفرنس ان افشنسي ذير مور افشنت ذان ترو هيبا فلتر بس ذي ار نوت بروتكتيف. So what you need is a true HIPAA filter, captures a wide range of contaminants, and it protects, catches 99.97 of particles. And it uh, only allows anything less uh, or uh, less than 0.3 microns to, to penetrate. Uh, something very important is the, to do the differential pressures uh, monitoring uh, for uh, our uh, HIPAA filters. Of course, this is not a HIPAA filter, but just to give you an idea, so why we need to monitor, because as you see with age, with time, here you can just see the flow here. You have more flow uh, coming through the filter. Then it starts to be less because it will start to clog the HIPAA filter. And again, uh, you can see it, it's, uh, it totally stops. And if you leave it, we don't change it or you don't do differential pressure, this coming to rupture and bacteria and uh, contaminant will, will flow. So this is how you monitor it. Uh, there is a, a, a tube you can just be below and uh, before and after the filter. It will give you the differential pressures. So you need to monitor this depending on the manufacturer's recommendations. When it reaches 50% or it depends on what the company recommends, you need to change your filter. Here in the, the Ministry of Health in the Kingdom, they mandate to change the filter every six months, maximum. So if you have a, the differential pressure becomes large, then you need to change your filters, even though it's less than six months due to the dust and sandstorms that we have. So how do we change the hyperfilters? As, you, as we mentioned, you need to protect yourself. You need to wear your uh, proper respirators, N95 or uh, other respirators to protect you. Then it should be removed, uh, placed in a plastic uh, biohazard bag and should be discarded with a medical waste through the uh, contracted company. Uh, triaging, try to go a bit fast and just quickly during COVID-19. If you can control your uh, entrances to the hospital, that is the best way. Uh, we are fortunate, our hospital is still new and we don't have many patients, many staff, so we controlled, uh, we only, everybody has to enter through the main entrance and through the ER entrance. So everybody gets a uh, visual triage uh, every morning or any time they're coming in. If you can do the same, have maybe three or four entrances to the hospital with the triaging station so you can check at least the temperatures for the staff and trying to have the questionnaire uh, for a patient just to make sure that uh, you triage them. Uh, another uh, challenge that we have when you have many patients and you have to change maybe uh, your, uh, your rooms into isolation rooms, your uh, regular patient rooms. It can be done. It uh, does not require major work, but the most important thing that you need uh, is you need a ventilator, of course. So uh, critical care uh, patients require ventilators. So you need to have that. You need a monitor, pa uh, patient monitors you can add to the room, which is, can easily be uh, added. And you need to have the medical gas outlets. The ASHRAE mandates to have multiple oxygen. Uh, they, they mandate actually four uh, oxygen. Uh, Sivahi is happy with two. So for isolation room, if you have two outlets of oxygen, uh, and uh, you need, you can, at least you need to have the suction more. So uh, I, that would be uh, good enough. 
So we need oxygen, more uh, oxygen outlets, and you need more suction. And then you can have your rooms as uh, critical care uh, rooms. Uh, overloaded with uh, COVID-19, you need to change your rooms into a HIPAA filter or into a yes. negative pressure rooms. Yeah. And this is very critical. So you can actually, you can have multiple pressure. If you have multiple rooms, if you adjust the negative, uh, the, the exhaust, you have more uh, suction, as we mentioned earlier, then all these rooms becomes uh, negative pressure. Yeah. But that does not mean, and you can close this chamber here in between. So that means you will have uh, completely 100% fresh air coming in and 100% air exhausted out. So no return. Uh, and that will give you this whole, uh, these areas as uh, negative pressure rooms. Even though it's without filters, if you spent it outside uh, the roof, it is acceptable by uh, MOH. But you have to be careful when your uh, AHUs, for example, if you see this image here. Um, so you can have, for example, here you have two floors or three floors are in one uh, air handling unit. So if you do this, uh, it will not work for you. So if you have one floor, for example, I need to make this floor as uh, my isolation floor for COVID-19 patient, I need to make sure that all this floor is only run in one air handling unit. In this case here, you can see this, uh, the second uh, floor. So there are, again, three floors run in one handling unit. So that means even if I make this floor as a COVID-19, yeah. then it's still that contamination is going to run down the floor yes. this floor. Mm -hmm. And so. the same thing for this one. So you need to make sure that just check your a, a, AHU. Uh, positive versus negative uh, pressure uh, operating. So if I need to have an operation, should I change my positive pressure, my ORs to negative pressure to prevent the infection? Or should I keep it positive pressure and try to deal with, with that? So I think it is probably, uh, this is, uh, has to be, uh, a risk assessment has to be done between infection control and the surgeons just to see what is the risk. Uh, I'll just give you a few, uh, a few hints, a few advantages and disadvantages. If you have a negative pressure room, that means uh, you're bringing uh, everything from outside, from the corridors, bringing the uh, air coming in, which might be contaminated. So you have a higher risk of infection for the patient because you have an open wound. So that is a, a disadvantage. And the advantage that uh, the air from COVID-19 patient is not going outside. But again, remember that they are uh, COVID-19 or Corona is not uh, an airborne. Even though they treat it as an airborne, but it is not, uh, an, uh, they have it confirmed that it is an airborne. So uh, the other thing, if you keep it as a positive pressure, if it's a small minor operation, it's better to keep the, your uh, operating room as a part of, uh, positive pressure to prevent the infections. And you can put the portable HIPAA filter to the near or close to the patient's head. And uh, hopefully that will, uh, that will protect uh, the patient. In addition, we're not only depending uh, on the ventilation, and that's even the isolation room. So you have the ventilation, but you have to depend on your PPEs. You have to protect yourself. So you have your N95 mask, your gloves, your face shield. So you have to protect yourself. If you don't protect yourself, even though you have the proper and the perfect system, you're still at high risk of getting the infection. So you need to make sure that you do the hand hygiene, you have your N95 mask, you do the fit testing, you make sure that it is the right mask. And it's very important, a lot of people uh, we've seen, they wear the N95 mask and they have a beard. It will not protect them. You need to make sure that if you do have an N95 mask, you need to have a clean shave just to make sure that you have a tight, uh, tight fit. I don't know if we have uh, more time or we'll leave time for question and answer. Uh, uh, th thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jabela. I guess uh, you, are, uh, uh, you are all uh, agreeing with me that uh, this lecture is very, uh, very fatty enough uh, to need some... Uh, non-alcoholic beer to uh, help in digest, uh, digest saying this. Uh, actually, we have a couple of questions now, and uh, if, uh, if you have uh, other questions, please put in Q&A. There is a chat box and Q&A. Please put in Q&A. And I have, we have a lot here, Mr. Jamil. Let's get started with some. Uh, actually, uh, let's get back focused on turning uh, a department or a ward into an isolation area, dedicated isolation area. In simple language, what the hospital administrator or the uh, medical administrator or the admin of the hospital needs to do, what's your recommendation in this pandemic, which is, you know, consuming the resources of the whole world? Okay. 
Uh, just, we just had uh, mentioned, I'll just go back to the previous slide here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Th this so is this, slide, yeah. Yeah, if you, have, if you do have your uh, uh, AHUs, uh, your air handling units covering one floor, you can check the, the, your layout or check uh, your air handling units. If it if, is covering if one don't, floor. Yeah, if they don't. If they don't, if they don't like uh, in, in this case, uh, what you have here, they have, they can close the dampers, you need to keep. Uh, dampers. Yes. So dampers. Use dampers and have certain rooms and increase uh, the, uh, the vacuum. And okay. use, of course, as we mentioned, use the portable HIPAA filters. So yes. you need for each room, you will need one portable HIPAA filter, and that will uh, that will provide uh, just. But make sure it is compatible with the size of the room. So it gives you it uh, for each uh, the portable HIPAA filter. It gives you uh, the area coverage. It will tell you this will cover 20 square meters or uh, 30 square meters. Make sure that your room is no longer it's not more than that. Okay. okay, otherwise you need to put two hypocrites. Type. Uh, uh, let me please put it in, uh, into Arabic in a very simple language. نتكلم بالعربي يا جماعة دلوقتي أنت عندك دي المشكلة الخطيرة اللي إحنا بنواجهها في كورونا دلوقتي زي ما الأستاذ جمال تفضل الشريحة دي كانت هايلة جدا. الناس فاكرة الناس فاكرة إن هي لما تعزل المرضى في جناح أو قسم خاص يبقى كده عزلوا المرضى. ده كلام غلط. تمام زي ما الاستاذ جمال قال دلوقتي ده الديبنس على نوع التهويه عندك الفكره بتاعت التهويه ان انا بدخل فريش اير من مكان من من تيوب وتطلع من مكان تاني ما يختلطوش ببعض الا في السيستمز المعقده الغاليه اللي الاستاذ جمال قال عليها اللي هي بيبقى فيه فلتره في جانكشنز بتاعتها ما دون ذلك فريش اير بيدخل وبعد كده بيطلع من ناحيه ثانيه واللي طالع اكتر من اللي داخل الله يعزكم زي ما قلنا في فيديو قبل كده فكره الشفاط او الاكزوست اللي عندك في في الباث او في او في المطبخ عندك ان هو بيسحب الهواء بسرعه من عندك من ال... نفس الموضوع بيدخل هواء بيطلع هواء اكتر منه يبقى انت عملت كده نيجاتيف بريشر بالاضافه الى الحاجه الثانيه اللي الاستاذ جمال عمل ستريس عليها اللي هو على الاقل 12 اير تشينجز بير اور ان الهواء بيتغير على الاقل 12 مره في الساعه يبقى مش معنى ان انا حطيت المرضى بتوع كورونا عشان اسئله جت كتير يا استاذ جمال على الموضوع دوت هل نحط العيان في سنجل روم بس هو مش نيجاتيف بريجر روم ولا فيها هيبا فلتر يبقى احنا عزلنا العيان سوري يو ار ديسيميتنج ذا انفكشن نفس الموضوع لو انا عزلت العيانين يا جماعه الخير في مكان معين من المستشفى ده لا يعني ان انا عزلتهم هي دي المشكله اللي الناس واقعه فيها هل البي بي اي بتاعك وانت داخل على العيان يكفي؟ آه للاسف لا يكفي ليه؟ ناقشناها برضو في فيديو قبل كده على القناه عندي ان الفيروس اللي بيتعامل معاه صغير جدا الهيبا فلتر بيتعامل لغايه 0.5 او 0.3 اقل من كده ما يحصلوش ترابنج احنا الحمد لله بنقول ان هو دروبلت لكن للاسف وانت بتشتغل ايروسول وفي مثلا دراي اير او مش متحكمين كويس في في تهويه الغرفه وما فيش هيبا فلتر ما فيش اير فلو قوي ما فيش نيجاتيف بريشر يبدا الموضوع في الدراي اير اللي احنا عايشين فيه دوت يبدا يبقى عادي ايروسول هتبقى اير هيرجع لحجمه الطبيعي الفيروس اللي هو 0.125 علشان كده يقول لك يا لابس ان 95 وفيس شيلد انا بيجي لي العدوى ليه؟ علشان في ثلاث عوامل مع بعض لازم يبقوا موجودين اللي هو البي بي اي ونيجاتيف بريشر وهيبا فلتر اتفضل استاذ جمال ومعظم معظم الفيروسات حجمها اقل من 0.3 مايكرونز فهذه يعني ال 95 ماسك طبعا التسميه يمكن اكيد الجميع عارفين ال 95 ماسك انه هي بتحمي 95% فقط في 5% في 5% ستيل ما تحميش نعم صح. من الفيروسات نعم تمام طيب في سؤال حضرتك عندنا للدنتال كلينكس وفي سؤال برضو عن اللاب ايه التهويه بتاعتهم وخصوصا مع كوفيد 19 طبعا اللاب لازم يكون نيجاتيف بريشر بس مش هو الى 6 6 اير تشينجز بير اور لكن ما يحتاج انه يكون في مونيتور يعني فيكس مونيتور وي كان تيستد باي باي تيشو او باي سموك تيست and you need to monitor it daily. Okay. The microbiology has to be stronger, stronger uh, negative. If you have a uh, TB lab, you need to have uh, an anti-room and you need to have a stronger uh, negative lab. But in the end, it should be negative pressure. Okay. So the dental clinic has aerosol uh, inducing the procedures? Dental clinic, no. The dental clinic should be negative pressure. The, the labor delivery for the ولادة should be positive pressure. So the clean areas, uh, clean areas should be positive pressure. And uh, dirty areas, نيجاتيف بريشر ولو اضطرينا ندخل عيان على وحده زي او ار المفروض تبقى بوزيتيف بريشر لانها المفروض كلين اريا حضرتك قلت نحافظ على البوزيتيف بريشر لكن نحط هيبا فلتر نعم 
نعم. اوكي مع جود بي بي اي دي شود دو ا ريسك اسسمنت شوف يعني في زي ما قلنا في محاسن وفي مساوي وي هاف كونز اند بوز ادفانتجز ديس ادفانتجز اند سي ويتش ون ويز ويتش ون اند جو تو ريسك بس احيانا حيضطروا يحولوها نيجاتيف بريشر احيانا احيانا وده برضه في المستشفى عندنا وي هاف ون ون روم ون اوبريتنج روم از سيبتيك وذ نيجاتيف بريشر فور ميجر اوبريشن ويتش از Yes, yes, this is great. احيانا الاو ار يا جماعه زي ما الاستاذ جمال تفضل محتاجين نعمل ريسك اسسمنت مع الجراحين جماعه الانفكشن كنترول والسيفتي والجراحين والاداره الطبيه يتفقوا البروسيجر دوت محتاج نيجاتيف بريشر ولا بوزيتيف بريشر الفكره في نيجاتيف بريشر ان انا هخلي كل الميكروبس موجوده في المكان عندي البوزيتيف بريشر ان انا بطرد الميكروبس من حواليا هي دي الفكره ببساطه شديده جدا فبنعمل ريسك اسسمنت في لكجريس فنتليشن سيستمز ممكن تحول البوزيتيف بريشر بتاع الاو ار ان كابل اوف سكندز بتحولها لنيجاتيف بريشر لكن للاسف اللاكجري دي مش موجوده في كتير من غرف العمليات او في نظم التهويه عموما في المستشفيات وخصوصا المباني القديمه فعلشان كده بيبقى الموضوع محتاجين ترانزيشنال سوليوشنز زي ما الاستاذ جمال قال ممكن تخلي بوزيتيف بريشر في الاو ار لكن تخلي فيه هيبا فلتر في مهندس كان عمل حاجه في جدة كده ان هو عمل فلتر مع دات سيستم خاصه تعمل اكزوست لبره علشان يحاول يعملها نيجاتيف بريشر اتفضل يا استاذ كمال. في نقطه في نقطه بس بضحك ستريس يعني لو حولت انا غرفه او كانت غرفه انا احولها نيجاتيف بازل بريشر لو كانت غرفه عمليات بازل بريشر وحولتها لنيجاتيف بريشر ما عندي مشكله ات كان بي دان ولكن لو رجعتها العكس من نيجاتيف بريشر الى بازل بريشر كل البكتيريا والفيروس اللي تراب في الفلتر اي بلو ات باك انا علشان كده علشان كده صح عشان كده حضرتك قبل ما نرجعها نيجاتيف بريشر قبل ما نرجعها بنعمل ايه؟ المينتننس بتاعها الهيبا الهيبا فلتر لازم يحصل ريبليسمنت اعتقد ان احنا ما اديناش الهيبا فلتر حقه النهارده فاعتقد ان احنا ممكن نعمل ريسكيجول هيبا فلتر معلش ان في ناس مصدومه انا اسف في بعض الاسئله بتاعتها ان هل فعلا احنا بنحط العيانين عندنا في سنجل روم او الايزوليشن وارد وبنعزلهم وبنلبس بي بي اي وبنعتقد ان كده ان احنا حلينا المشكله انا اسف يا جماعه عشان كده انا عملت الويبينار دوت على الفنتليشن لان الفنتليشن عماله تتسبب في نقل العدوى داخل المستشفيات وللطاقم الطبي فاتمنى تكون الرساله وصلت في سؤال هنا يا استاذ جمال بيقول طيب لو لو اتفضل اتفضل سيادتك الاول اتفضل اتفضل سؤال بيقول لك لو التويلت دور الاكسس بتاعه من الانتي روم مش جوه النيجاتيف بريشر روم بتاعت البيشنت وات تو دو؟ اوكي اتس اتس فاين اتس اكسبتبل الوزاره تقبل في ان يكون الباب من الانتي روم اتس اوكي بس يكون انتي روم الانتي روم دي نيجاتيف بريشر شغال اه طبعا طبعا اذا يكون النيجاتيف بريشر في الانتي روم والباث روم هاير قلنا هاير نيجاتيف بريشر يكون سترونجر نيجاتيف بريشر والايزوليشن روم تكون سترونجر نيجاتيف بريشر أو الايديال يكون من داخل غرفه العزل ولكن نعم صح طيب طبعا الناس عماله تسال في حته ان احنا ازاي نحول وورد اعتقد ان احنا اجبنا عليها يا جماعه بنوع من انواع التفصيل انا والاستاذ جمال ولو في اسئله عندكم تاني يا ريت بعد كده تبقوا تبعتوها لنا علشان المحاضرات القادمه ان شاء الله لو انتم عايزين طيب المحاضره موجوده على اليوتيوب هنحط المحاضره دي على اليوتيوب احنا كنا عايزين نعمل بث مباشر على اليوتيوب النهارده بس كان في بعض التكنيكال ايشوز الغريبه جدا مش في زوم كان حاجه ثانيه فالحمد لله قدرنا نتغلب عليها قبل المحاضره ان شاء الله بعد كده هيبقى بث مباشر على اليوتيوب للمحاضرات القادمه لكن ان شاء الله المحاضره دي بكره باذن الله هتتحط على اليوتيوب طيب هنا في سؤال اوكي 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 هنا خلينا نشوف السؤال دوت الايزوليشن اوف كوفيد 19 نو نيد فور نيجاتيف بريشر از ات از نوت اير بورن انفكتد انفكشن انليس يو دو ذا ريسبيراتوري تيستينج از بير جلوبال ستاندرد سو ايزوليشن از بيتر بت نوت ريكويرمنتس اي باس ذس كويستشن فور يو يا استاذ جمال عشان كده على اليوتيوب اوكي سؤال مهم سؤال مهم سؤال مهم جدا وبتصير كتير يا دروب ليه احنا بنعملها اير بورن ونيجاتيف بريشر اتفضل يا فندم نعم الوزاره هو الى الان they don't know is it a droplet so they don't have really solid uh, answer is it droplet is it micro droplets is it uh, airborne until now we don't have really a solid uh, classification of answer ولكن uh, the MOH وزاره الصحه mandates if you have suspected case it has to be in uh, airborne 
isolation room. If it's uh, positive, it must be in uh, airborne isolation room, negative pressure isolation room. Even though we think you know it's a it's a drop it uh, board, when I can wizard the wizard Saha mandates you know it has to be uh, in a negative pressure isolation room. And if you have it as an airborne isolation. يذكرني الكلام دوت بالمرس كوفي ازمه المرس كوفي في المملكه ان هو لما بدا الايفيدنس يبقى ان هو دروبلت انفكشن كان نفس الموضوع ان هو بيتعامل معايا يا جماعه في المملكه كاير بورن انفكشن والعالم كله اتعامل معاه كاير بورن انفكشن ايزوليشن اي 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 ليه؟ لان زي ما قلنا حضرتك لما بتكون كهيلث بروفايدر قريب جدا من العيان وبتعمل اير سول انديوسنج بروسيجر بتقرب من العيان بتعمل ساكشن بتعمل برونكوسكوبي بتركب رايل بتركب تيوب بتحط على فنتليشن بتعمل انتيوبيشن اكستيوبيشن كل الحاجات دي بتعمل دروبلتس بمنتهى البساطه المشكله ان انت بتعرض نفسك لكميه فايرال لود عاليه جدا بسبب المسافه دي ممكن الهيبا فلتر مش قادر يشد او حصل ان هو تراب اوريدي والديفرنشال بريشر بدا يبقى في خلل فانت بقيت اكسبوز حتى لو انت لابس ال 95 عامل له فيت تيست عشان كده بنقول الفنتليشن في منتهى الاهميه نخلي بالنا منها يا جماعه الخير الله يبارك فيكم سؤال مهم جدا برضه يا استاذ جمال نقول هنا في برضه بس بس تعليق قصير وفي ستدي واز دان ان ذا ستيتس Uh, regarding this, and they they found out that it is uh, uh, it's micro droplets, the droplets, and they, يعني لاحظ إنه ال virus will be suspended, or these micro droplets will be suspended in the air for uh, many hours, multiple hours. يعني أكثر من دراسة بعضها من ثلاث ساعات. One of the studies uh, showed up to 18 hours. The so micro droplets, if you have air circulation, في الغرفة اللي الباب ينفتح يتسكر في في تهوية. The, the micro droplets will stay in the air for up to 18 hours. It could wow. stay there, wow. you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's uh, that's maybe why. صح صح وربنا يسترها بصراحه لان يعني البيهيفير بتاع كورونا لسه بيدرس وللاسف الدراسات الاخيره يا جماعه بتقول ان الفيروس قادر ان هو يعمل ميوتيشنز بمنتهى السرعه شوفوا احنا في خلال كام شهر بدات تظهر ميوتيشنز الطفرات اللي بتحصل في الفيروس دي بتغير البيهيفير بتاعه فنبقى واخدين استعداداتنا كويس ربنا يحفظكم جميعا سؤال برضو يا استاذ جمال من فضلك uh, all the patient rooms not 100% fresh in uh, its a return air or fcu معلش حضرتك ممكن توضح لي fcu دي and the exhaust will be only in bathroom how you change ward to corona with this setting okay uh, as we had uh, mentioned earlier, earlier usually just for uh, to consume energy in these rooms you have uh, 80% okay uh, only 20% usually about 20% fresh air coming into the here you can see it coming fresh air Uh, only 20% and 80% of the air is circulating, goes back and recirculates just to preserve energy. So uh, if, we, if I have to change, like here I have these rooms, I need to change these rooms. If they are in one ward, it will be easy for me to do. So this is the FCU, fan, fan pole unit. What it means, you have the fresh air coming here, there's the gap, it goes above the ceiling where you don't see it. Then it goes into a filter with a fan and there are the heating units or cooling units inside. So you can control each room uh, individually, the temperature wise. Then the air comes out from the uh, exhaust back into the system, uh, the ventilation, which is right here, uh, and it goes out uh, exhausted. But the problem from like this room, you can notice that this room, this room, this room, all these rooms, they're sharing the same exhaust system. So if you have it in only one floor, it's okay by increasing this exhaust system, uh, the, the, the ventilation, then I will have negative pressure on this room. So if I'm using all four uh, positive corona patients, it doesn't matter. They can be uh, shared in the same uh, floor. Then I will just need to increase the, the exhaust, and I have to make yeah. sure that it, it's, it it goes all the way to the sea uh, to the roof, as we mentioned earlier. I need to extend it at least 1.5 uh, meters uh, above the, the highest point in the roof. Then that that would be okay. But the only issue you have to be careful that if your uh, air handling unit covers different levels, two or three floors, yes, then that you have to be careful with that. Yes. Otherwise, it's okay just by increasing this. It will it will help. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, we have another question. When we c c convert patient rooms to ICU, what concerns we should consider about oxygen pressure? Can we share oxygen pressure? And what oxygen consumption per patient should be added to overall hospitals' oxygen consumption? Okay, of course, the, the, the best thing for the oxygen when you have an uh, isolation room that you have multiple uh, outlets in the wall. So that would be your best option. But now because of time-wise and because of the crisis, you can put uh, the so alarm uh, splitter. You can put splitter in the, the oxygen. It should not affect your pressure. Your pressure should be at four bars. So if you, if you put one splitter or two oxygen lines, it should not, be, it should not affect it. 
The other thing that some people might say you need to make sure that you have the emergency uh, power, it's not a big deal because the ventilators have uh, their batteries, which is at least uh, four hours, or I'm uh, sorry to say the UBS. So the uh, ventilators have batteries which would last, they would run the ventilators usually for approximately four hours. So it's okay to have uh, your ventilators, could be portable ventilators. Monitors, they're easy, you can just get them to the room. And just the biggest concern is just having your oxygen make sure that you have enough oxygen uh, because of course you're gonna have uh, more consumption uh, for, uh, for the oxygen. So a splitter to have two oxygen uh, lines from each outlet uh, can work. And again, the best thing is if you have time, you can uh, bring another uh, line. If you have gypsum board, it's easy enough to bring another line from uh, into this room. But okay. splitters would be okay to use. Uh, for two, as long as you maintain the pressure at four bars. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, fee, so I have a portable HEPA filter specifications. Can you recommend any product company, please, any specifications for HEPA? Uh, no companies. I, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know if, uh, which is a better company. And we shouldn't, now. we shouldn't promote <laughs> this yeah, webinar, but, uh, but, but in general, just, specifications. Yeah, in general, as we mentioned, just has to be at least uh, in your to uh, prevent 99.97 of the particulate and uh, you need to be zero, at least 0 0.3 uh, microns. So anything less than uh, or more than 0 0.3 microns should be prevented. Okay, uh, very so serious question here. If HVAC system is disabled and not ready yet, uh, is it safe to operate a new hospital with wall mounted AC split and portable HEPA filters only? Scenario that we No, this is very, uh, because uh, the uh, the uh, so split AC will give you only cool uh, air, but will not give you any ventilation. Uh, remember that uh, portable HIPAA filter will only will purify the, the room, but will not give you uh, negative pressure. Mm. So, uh, like open, any interim okay. solutions for this case? Because it is very common. Yes, yeah, so we need to have the, the ventilation. As you mentioned earlier, some, uh, somebody had, uh, if you have the HIPAA filter, uh, the portable HIPAA filter with the ventilation to exhaust it outside the room, that will be, but you do need the ventilation. Without the ventilation, it is. Uh, uh, okay, but, 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 but it is what it is. So we have AC split system in this unit, and we have corona patients. Uh, HIPAA filter. Uh, okay, we, we can we can do this. But what about the ventilation? How to control the ventilation with yeah, big exhaust, for example, uh, attached to the uh, the HIPAA filter? What, what, what to do? Even, yeah, even if you, uh, you have the, the exhaust fan to the portable HIPAA filter, it will not give you the minus 2.5 pascals, it will not give you the air changes per yeah. hour to 12. Yeah. So you need to have, uh, you need to have uh, some kind of uh, a big fan, big uh, just to have your negative pressure. And there's something else with the, the split AC, that it will, uh, uh, because of the water we're having there uh, inside, it will have bacteria yeah. with time. So you have multiple instead of uh, not only uh, not having negative pressure, but you have a higher risk of bacterial growth. You want to do more cleaning. Mm. Uh, so uh, it is a, it's a must uh, trying to figure out a way to have your okay. ventilation. We, we are in a situation we have no time, no resources to figure it out. Okay, and we have those patients with COVID-19 and uh, we are trying our best not to disseminate the infection all through the hospital. So we have AC split and it is not ideal because, you know, as uh, you mentioned, the filter the filters are not there and uh, you know the ventilation it is uh, not up yeah. to the uh, uh, negative pressure but what to do C can we uh, what uh, you're the expert because it's it's uh, the situation in in too many hospitals in the region and the world especially in the middle income countries and uh, my home country egypt uh, is suffering yeah, from this so uh, so what, what what to do Unfortunately, I don't know. I just put a couple of pictures that for these are some uh, uh, OR rooms. This is an operating room, so you can see it uh, with the doors open to the balcony and uh, with only a curtains. This is another. الأستاذ جمال ما حضرناش والعمليات بتتعمل والشباك مفتوح والدبر رايح جاي ما ما شافش الكلام دوت الظاهر هو في أمريكا. أنا مشتوق. طيب إحنا 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 يا دلوقتي في طيب خلينا نتكلم إن في private hospitals. A lot of private hospitals with AC ventilation, air conditioning. They live between you with your desk, okay? No. Split units, okay? مش عايزين نقول شباك حد لكن split units. عندنا في غرف مثلاً عندي في مصر العنبر كله مش هتلاقي فيه أصلاً تكييف. هتلاقيه مفتوح على البلكونة الجميلة اللي حضرتك تعرضها من شوي. 
لكن هل في انترم سولوشنز ممكن نعملها علشان نحاول نحمي العيانين ونحمي الهيلث كير بروفايدرز؟ كان وي؟ اي اي دونت هاف ان انسر اي كانت تيك اوف اواي ويز اوت ذا فنتليشن اي دونت وي هاف ا فيري هاي ريسك اونستلي اي مين فنتليشن كان بي دون ويز ايزي ويز اكسبوز دكتس اف اف ذات از ذا واي بس ستيل ذا كوست So you still need their handling unit, and you need doctors to to make the negative pressure. Otherwise, without the negative pressure, you're going to depend totally on the PPEs, personal protective equipment, which is the least uh, provide the least defense uh, for the staff. فكروا فيها يا جماعة لأن زي ما سوس جبل قال السؤال ده صعب جبته جدا يعني إحنا كنا في مصر أيام في الأنظمة الطيور زمان كانوا قالوا لو أنت زرقت خالص اعمل شفرات ضخم في الغرفة. في الغرفه السنجل انا يعني شفت ضخم على الاقل يعني بتحاول يعني لكن ده مش فنتليشن ده مش فنتليشن وانا اتفق تماما علميا ده مش فنتليشن لكن هو بيحاول قدر الامكان ان هو يوجد نوع من انواع يعني ان هو باستمرار بيطلع الهواء بره زي العفو كده ما بنعمل في في الباث روم او في المطبخ لكن هو ده مش حل زي ما استاذ جمال ده مش حل فنتمنى ان احنا نفكر فيه كويس الموضوع دوت علشان نقدر نتحكم في القصه دي طيب في هنا سؤال يا استاذ جمال is it acceptable to have the exhaust duct not on rooftop no it has to be at the highest it has to be at the highest point above uh, the roof it can be from the side well, I, it, but they still have to extend it to above the, the rooftop so it does not have to it go through a shaft but as long as you have it it has to go above uh, the rooftop as we mentioned sabahi accepts 1.8 meters and uh, the ashri recommends 3 meters above طيب. طيب. انا وحضرتك عارفين ان في مستشفيات اتزنقوا في بورتابل هيبا فلترز وبالذات آه. في الازمه اللي احنا فيها دي فهو راح حافر في الاوضه خلى الهيبا فلتر جنب العيان وراح حافر في في المكان اللي ما فيهوش آه. داكتس او تيوبس معديه او مثلا اوتلتس بتاعت بايوميديكال جاز فهي كانت تحت شويه تمام خلينا نتفق على كده الحل ده مش آه. مقبول مش مقبول ولكن ولكن الناس اضطرت تعمل كده. What do you think؟ نقدر نعمل ايه او نقدر نحسن على الاقل البراكتس دوت ازاي؟ اوكي هو زي ما قلنا بالاول الاول البورتبل هيبا فلتر مش هيعطيني النيجاتيف بريشر اللي محتاجه ايوه نعم نعم هو فقط اتس اونلي بيوريفاين حتى لو طلعته في داخل الغرفه او طلعته بره الغرفه اتس اونلي بيوريفاين في الفلتر الموجود هو اتس ترابينج ذا جيرم يس سو اتس نوت ا بيج ديل انه بس على الاقل على الاقل على الاقل نعم على الاقل اه اه يعني سحب من قدام العيان مثلا عشان يحمي الهيلث كير بروفايدر ماشي طيب يقول للمنستر دي دي اكسبت الان يعني في بعض الغرف اف يو دونت هاف نيجاتيف بريشر رول ذير اكسبتنج تو هاف البورتبل هيبا فيتر ان ذا باست دي ديد نوت اكسبت ات بات ناو دي ار بيكوز ذا كرايس دي ار اكسبتنج اوكي اوكي طيب دلوقتي المعامل اللي بتعمل البي سي ار فور كوفيد 19 ايه البراكتس بتاعها في الفنتليشن يا استاذ جمال؟ سؤال اوكي ذاتس ا جود كويشن اي هاف نوت فيزت اي ديد نوت فيزت هو الان في عده مختبرات في في المملكه ريفرنس لابس نعم ذي دو مينلي للوزاره ولكن في بعض المختبرات الخاصه عندهم ترخيص من الوزاره ترن بس از وي منشن انه كل اللابس دي هاف تو بي نيجاتيف بريشر ان جنرال So I'm they're dealing with the, with the biopsies and the stuff, so it's not uh, just like the microbiology. طيب سؤال مهم تاني negative pressure can be maintained with only portable HIPAA filter machine. قلنا الكلام دوت مش صح. قلنا negative pressure بيتحقق بإن أنا بضخ air وبطلع air أكتر منه. That negative pressure. Okay. Otherwise, it is not negative pressure. A HIPAA filter من اسمه filter. is filtering وطبعا احيانا بيبقى على السبلاي زي ما ممكن نتكلم في مره قادمه ان شاء الله استاذ جمال لو عندك وقت الله يكرمك احيانا بيبقى على السبلاي واحيانا بيبقى على الاكزوست والبوزيتيف بريشر يكون على السبلاي والنيجاتيف بريشر يكون على الاكزوست بالظبط كده بالظبط كده طيب آه الاخ فارس يبدو ان هو بيقترح اقتراح للسيناريو اللي احنا قلنا فيه ان انا عندي اي سي سبلت او حاجه مش يعني مش عارفين نحل القصه فبيقول اي ثينك يو كان يوز دور تنت وذ هيبا فلتر ماشين ان ذيس كيس وات دو يو ثينك هو بيحاول يحل معانا المشكله بس اي جيس ات از نوت ا سولوشن اوكي شكرا على على المحاوله ولكن استدعي يعني في دونت هاف ذا نيجاتيف بريشر هو هو الايديا انه جاست تو مينتين النيجاتيف بريشر هي ذا فكره ذا ايديا او الفكره لما تفتح الباب هذا الدرافت اللي يقول هذا وين يو كلوز ذا دور That's what causes the air to 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 go outside the room, and then you spread uh, the the virus or bacteria. So when you have a negative pressure, that that, that is preventive. 
So you open the door, you have strong negative pressure, it's, uh, that draft, it will not uh, cause the bacteria to, to escape. Okay, and then a question very important, Mr. Gamal. What if there is no exhaust and no AHU, just a supply from the FCU through the chiller and a return, which is only opening in the ceiling to allow the return air to pass between the rooms? Okay. So this will work just like a, a split AC. So because you have you don't have any air coming from outside, you have the air just circulating inside the room. Yeah. So the fan coil uh, coil unit, it's only cooling the room or maintaining the temperature only, but not uh, pressure. So it will uh, it will not give you any negative pressure or positive pressure. Okay. Uh, a lot of questions uh, regarding the access to the bathroom from the ante room. Mr. Jamal replied already in Arabic, it is acceptable practice. Okay, however, the best practice to be accessed from the patient's room. Here is a very sad question, Mr. Jamal, but in case of outbreak, like we are facing now, from where we will get AIIR? From where we can isolate airborne infection? Okay, so what do you think? Unfortunately, as we had mentioned, that you can try try to see one of your AHUs, which rooms it covers, and try to change these into your, uh, even, even without the HIPAA filter, but at least you can control the negative. <coughs> Again, the ASHRAE does not mandate the HIPAA filter. If you have a dedicated uh, source that can, going above the ceiling three meters, then you don't have to have the HIPAA filter. So at least you try to track to see your, uh, one of your AHUs, which areas, which, uh, which rooms covers, uh, five, 10, 15 rooms, and try to keep these rooms as a negative pressure by increasing the, the exhaust return, uh, reducing the return, uh, increasing the exhaust, that this will change into, uh, and keep it as 100, uh, just because the damper, the return between uh, that. But the, the only advantage, disadvantage, of course, the damper, you need to make sure that you have enough oil to keep the room cool. Now we're uh, coming in the summertime, the temperature is gonna be hot. So if your uh, system is not designed to handle 100% fresh air and cool it, then you will have, uh, you'll have problems. اوكي سو جاست ميك الدامبرز علشان الشباب يبقوا معانا الدامبرز اللي هي الحواجز اللي بتعمل زونينج في الاتش فاك سيستم بحيث تبقى زي يونت تقدر تقول دوت الورد دوت بالدامبرز انت اقفل من حيل واقفل من حيل فالجزء دوت خاص بالضغط دي والاكزوست بيطلع منها هي لها نظام تهويه لوحدها الدامبرز بت... طيب الشاشه الان هذه اللي بتعمل يعني هنا الهواء بيدخل من هنا والروتين حيرجع من هنا 10% من الهواء الجديد و90% حيدخل روتين لو انا سكرت هذه الدامبر حيصير 100% اير 100% من الهواء يدخل و100% الهواء حيطلع ولكن اي جاست نيد تو ميك شور لازم هنا عندي تو الكويلز هنا الكولينج او الهيتنج كويل انه مصممه تو بي ايبل تو هاندل تو هاندل 100% اير لو كان كميه الهواء بتدخل كبيره والهواء حار من برا في الصيف والكويل هنا مش حيبردها بشكل كافي. سو حيكون درجه الحراره ات ويل بي تو وورم انسايد. حيكون عندي بابر فنتليشن ولكن درجه الحراره تمبرشر وايز ات ويل نوت نيد. سو نيد تو ميك شور ذات ات از كومباتور اي نيد تو اد مور كويل فور ذا كولينج ذا رومز. But that's the, the damper we're talking about. Just we close this one so it comes 100% air coming and 100% uh, exhausted. Okay, so Al Khatir, لأن the bronchoscopy is aerosol inducing procedure. فهنا بيقول تاني is it accepted to do bronchoscopy in room regular ventilation and HEPA filter? No, bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy should yeah should be done in a negative pressure. negative pressure room. Any aerosol inducing a device or a procedure, you have to use negative pressure. علشان تحمي نفسك يا جماعة الخير عشان تحمي نفسكو. تمام؟ النيجاتيف بريشر دوت هنا في الحاله دي في الغالب علشان نحمي الهيلث كير بروفايدر لانك بتبقى اكسبوزد حتى ولو انت لابس فول بي بي اي زي ما قلنا الفيروس صغير جدا وممكن مع الايروسولز دوت ممكن يبقى سسبندد ويبقى يبدا يفك من الدروبلت مع الحجم الصغير دوت مع حتى الفلتر مع البي بي اي وذا جيفنج ذات ان انتوا لابسين البي بي اي صح معلش انا اسف لان البي بي اي احيانا بيحصل بي في بريتش كتير يعني بمجرد ان حضرتك تعرق وانت في الاوضه لاي سبب ما تمام والماسك دوت يبدا يتبلل كده انت اصلا عملت له بريتش تمام فبيحصل بريتش كتير في البي بي اي فالحمايه الاصيله مع البي بي اي موضوع نيجاتيف بريشر ثم لو اضفنا عليها زي ما استاذ جمال تفضل هيبا فلتر 
الاشري از نوت مانديتنج ليبا فلتر لكن لو ليبا فلتر موجود هيحسن الموضوع بصوره كبيره لانه بيعمل له من انواع الفلو بعيد عنك بيسحب الهواء من جنب العيان مش بيخليه يبقى في وشك صح كده يا استاذ جمال؟ تمام طيب هنا في سؤال مهم جدا بالنسبه لتحويل الفنادق واماكن المحاجر العامه الكوارنتين بالنسبه لتحويل الفنادق الى اماكن حجر لمرضى كورونا وعاده ما تكون عده طوابق وغرف الاستاف الطبي عاده تكون بالطابق الاول ودي يفك اذا تحول الفندق كله او مبنى كامل الى الى كوفيد لكورونا بيشن اتس فاين لانه ما عندك somebody else to to accept طبعا الاستاف الاستاف they should be well protected yes. uh, mm. الاستاف all unit it's fine تمام 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 بس في معلومه جميله في الموضوع ان الكوفيد 19 عموما في المحاجر اللي هي بره المستشفيات بيبقى الحمد لله احيانا الحالات فيري مايلد تمام فيري مايلد سيمبتومز وبيبقى احيانا مش بتحتاج حتى تريتمنت مجرد سيلف ايزوليشن او مع تريتمنت خفيف لكن زي ما استاذ جمال قال الاستاف موضوع الاستاف يفضل ان هم يبقوا في مكان غير المختار طيب في سؤال تاني في معلومه فيما يخص تهويه غرف المرضى عن طريق فتحه الشباك في الغرفه وذلك يؤدي الى اختفاء وخروج الفيروس والميكروبات خارج الغرفه وهذه الطريقه افضل من استخدام انظمه التكييف والضغط المنخفض السؤال هو ما مدى صحه هذه المعلومه وهل التهويه عن طريق شباك الغرف يحدث فرقا داخل الغرف طبعا هو الريكويرمنتس ممنوع يكون في اي نوافذ الغرف البيشنت روم شيد نوت هاف ويندوز ذات اوبنز يعني النوافذ في غرف المرضى لازم ما تكون تتفتح لعده اسباب السبب الاول هو طبعا الكونتامينيشن البكتيريا والدست والغبار الناحيه الثانيه في اطفال ممكن انه يطيح من هذه النوافذ ايضا في بعض الحالات مثل الانتحار سوسايد سوسايد اند سو ممنوع غرف المنطقه ممنوع النوافذ uh, يعني اول السبب الرئيسي للاساسي هو الكونتامينيشن للغبار والبكتيريا من من برا تدخل صحيح بالاضافه الى ان احيانا بيستخدم بينتنج بيبقى انتي فانجل او انتي بكتيريال فده بيعمل بريتش اوريدي للغرفه uh, طيب uh, في هل في شهادات حضور للموضوع؟ ما في شهادات حضور، احنا بنحاول ننقذ الهيلث كير بروفايدرز وننقذ المستشفيات من الانفكشن في بانديميك خطير وتاريخي بنعيشه كنا بنسمع عنه فقط في الاسبانيا في في الاسبانيا الانفلونزا الاسبانيا عفوا، الاسبانيا منها براء هي جايه من امريكا اصلا وانتقلت مع الحرب العالميه الاولى وقتلت من 50 ل 65 مليون بني ادم حول العالم، وكنا بنسمع عن بعض الابيديميكس الثانيه اللي كانت كونفايند او كونتين في اماكن وكانت الوفيات فيها مش كتير زي ما حصل في الستينيات زي ما حصل في سارس كوفي 1 في الصين ميرس كوفي في المملكه بفضل الله كان الموضوع الى حد كبير يعني التارجت بوبيوليشن كان فيري فولنربل لكن زي ما انتم شايفين الكورونا فيروس فيروس البيفير بتاعه خطير جدا ودي من الفيروسات اللي بتبقى لانها مش مثلا زي الايبولا بتتعب العيان جدا فبيقعد ما بيقدرش يتحرك وبيمتنع عن الديسيميشن انفكشن بسبب الاعياء الشديد اللي هو فيه ومعدل الوفاه الكيس فيتاليتي ريت عالي فال فالايبولا كان بي ايراديكيتد صحيح بيجي يعمل سيفيرتي عاليه جدا وبعد كده بيهبط جدا مره واحده لكن للاسف الكورونا يبدو ان احنا بنستعد للويف الثانيه والويف الثانيه زي ما تعلمنا في الابيديميكس وتعلمنا في السبانيش فلو للاسف الويف الثانيه احيانا بتبقى اخطر بكثير من الويف الاولانيه لان الناس بتبدا تستهتر والبيهيفير بتاع الناس بيتغير والاخطر ان الفيروس بيحصل له ميوتيشنز وبيبدا يكتسب مناعه وبيتعلم مع الانسان فالله يعطيكم الف عافيه انا متشكر جدا لحضوركم جميعا زي ما قلنا برضو اليوتيوب ان شاء الله هيبقى موجود بكره باذن الله باذن الله تعالى على قناتي على اليوتيوب فزورونا بكره ان شاء الله على القناه وعلى السوشيال ميديا اي اسئله يا جماعه ابعتوها لنا اي كومنتس اي خواطر جميله عن هذه المحاضره الموضوع في منتهى الاهميه الفنتيشن انا قعدت ادرس الموضوع الفتره اللي فاتت بشهور في موضوع الكوفيد 19 الفنتيشن عماله يبهدل المستشفيات الفنتيشن يا جماعه فالله يبارك فيكم انا شاكر جدا الاستاذ جمال يعني اور اور بيوتيفول اكسبرت الخلوق الجميل اللي انا افتقدته جدا لما ترك الرياض بصراحه يعني الرياض كلها خسرته بصراحه يعني هذه هذا القا... هذه القامه العلميه الضخمه لكن الحمد لله الدنيا صغيره والاستاذ جمال معانا اهوت اونلاين 
ان شاء الله هنحط المحاضره دي بكره لو عندكم اسئله ثانيه او عايزين الاستاذ جمال يشرفنا في محاضره ثانيه بيتكلم عن فنتليشن في حته اعمق لان يبدو ان عندكم اسئله كتير جدا ما شاء الله والاستاذ جمال عنده علم كبير جدا يقدر يوصله لكم اهلا بكم على كل السوشيال ميديا عندي انتوا عارفين انا ام فيري ابروتشبل بيرسون يو كان كوميونيكيت وذ بي all over uh, كل التشانلز تقريبا فيسبوك تويتر لينكدين اند يوتيوب والايميل والواتساب اللي مع ناس كتير ان شاء الله شكرا جزيلا thank you all for being here tonight with us and hopefully this uh, was very beneficial and uh, stay safe I, yeah, this lecture this webinar is dedicated to the frontiers the frontliners who are sacrificing their lives actually facing this pandemic historic pandemic we are living within now okay so uh, thank you so much shukran mara ukhra ya ustaz jamal allah yak alf afiya fi hadhihi layla ramadaniya jamila barakallahu fik wa nafa'a bi ilmik inshallah ilmi yantafa'a bi fi mawazin hasanatak shukran lakum jami'an wa shukran ala musahamatkum wal comments wal as'ala wa inshallah law fi haga bi idhnillah qariban nalqi ala khair ay kalma khatamiya min sayatak ya ustaz jamal allah yak alf shukran wa alf afiya wa shukran ala alhudur wa inshallah bikun qassarna ma'akum ابدا 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 الله يعطيك الف عافيه الله يعزك ويبارك فيك كل عام وانتم بخير بارك الله فيكم شكرا جزيلا في امان الله في امان